Once we know about phosphonated esters, we can talk about another reaction called the Horner Wadsworth Emmons reaction. And, and I confess, I don't really call this the Horner Emmons, but everybody's going to throw in Horner and either or Wadsworth and Emmons in the name. I know it's a mouthful, but that, that's the name of the reaction named after the scientists who discovered it. So, the Horner Wadsworth Emmons begins with one of our phosphonate esters. This is a very simple one. Typically, uh, in fact, always in the Horner uh, Emmons reaction, we're going to have this group is going to be an electron withdrawing group. And in this case, it is, it, it's a carbonyl. So, what we do is we're going to take this and treat this with an aldehyde and some base. And there are a lot of different bases that people use. Uh, sodium ethoxide is really common, but there are many others. And these hydrogens are acidic because they're between both the carbonyl and the phosphoryl group. So we form this carbanion. You know, maybe you won't even call it a carbanion. It's, it's more appropriately called an enolate highly resonant stabilized anion. And uh, anions are electron rich, they're good nucleophiles. And what do you know, we have an electrophile in this reaction, the aldehyde. So once we form this anion, we are gonna attack our carbonyl. And let's try to draw this nicely. So, um, you know, this carbon of the aldehyde is going to end up down here. It's not an aldehyde anymore. It's been attacked. This is actually a tetrahedral intermediate. We've attacked the carbonyl, and so we get a tetrahedral center. Uh, but we don't go through our typical tetrahedral intermediate chemistry. Instead, this O minus, whoops, and I dropped something off of there. Lost one of our ethoxy groups. This behaves more like what we saw in the Wittig reaction, where the O minus attacks the nearby phosphorus. And let's wrap, um, let's go back here to the bottom right. I'm sorry, bottom left. And through this, and I'm not gonna leave space for that other ethoxy, there it is. It's, you know, phosphorus is tough because if you, um, it can have five bonds. And if you're used to drawing carbons, you just wanna stick four bonds on everything. And then phosphorus is like, whoops, we have one more group to stock on there. Okay, so what we get here is just like the Wittig reaction gives us an oxophosphatane intermediate. And just like the Wittig reaction, the oxophosphatane that we form is going to decompose. So I'm going to move these electrons and we end up forming a new carbon-carbon pi bond. So this reaction is very much like the Wittig reaction. We took this phosphorus reagent, we mixed, with, mixed it with a carbonyl, and we got a, um, an alkene out. Uh, what do we get uh, in addition to this alkene, which also happens to be an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, we also form this kind of interesting phosphorus side reagent. That um, we'll be able to easily get rid of. So overall, let's go to the very bottom. What we do in this reaction, the Horner-Emmons reaction, is we treat this with some kind of phosphonate ester where this R group will always be an electron withdrawing group. And of course, in this example that we did on the slide, we had a carbonyl group, but it could be any electron withdrawing group. We're gonna react this with some kind of aldehyde. You can also do ketones. Do this in the presence of base, and we get, um, a new alkene. Oops, I got my timer in the way. Can't see that, but there's a timer on this on my screen. And we get this. So where did these carbons come from in our alkene? Well, they came from two places. Uh, they came from the oxophosphatane, which we obtained by doing an SN2 on that group. And then our carbons in the product also came from this aldehyde. So 
you know, just mapping our starting materials on here. We had that alkyl halide and that aldehyde, and in the long term, after several steps, they formed that product. So this is a really handy way to make alkenes, much like the Wittig reaction, um, but it has some advantages over the Wittig reaction. We'll talk about those.